Hey boys and girls and welcome to Children's Bible Study today. It's Pastor Matthew with you and I'm coming to you from my office here. I uh, hope you guys have had a great week and I hope you're doing very well. Hey, we're going to continue our Bible story, Bible studies that we've been going through as a group and we've been studying parables. We've been talking about Bible stories that are parables that Jesus taught. And a parable is a special kind of story. It's a story that teaches a lesson. And in the New Testament, we find lots of parables where Jesus taught stories to help people understand God's love, God's kingdom, and all about God. And so we're going to continue that today with a story, Bible story, where Jesus tells three parables that are all connected. started, does anybody remember our big picture question that we've been studying? That's right. The question is, how does God care for his creation? And so we want to think about that for just a moment. And the answer to how God cares for this creation is this. 
God loves and rules over his creation according to his own perfect plan. In other words, God has a plan for you and for me and for this world that he created. And it's to bring glory to him and it's to bring men, women, boys, and girls into a loving relationship with him through his son, Jesus. Hey, boys and girls, it's Pastor Matthew again. I moved over to my desk in my office because I want to play a game with you, uh, maybe to help you understand and get ready for the Bible story this morning. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move the camera so that you can see my desk, and we're going to play a game together, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some items out here on my desk. So first, I have a deck of cards. Can you see those right there? There's a deck of cards. That's one of the items I'm putting out here. And then here is a TV remote control. And this is a back scratcher, it's a little hand. I use this probably a lot in my office because my back gets itchy. So I put my back scratcher out there. I have a little bracelet, see this little bracelet here? And I have a little tiny flashlight, see that? Cut it on and off. I'm gonna put that right there. And I have a pair of scissors. See the scissors? And this, this is a coin that I got from Hong Kong when I went on a mission trip. So it's a, I think it's a five, five dollar coin, five Hong Kong dollars, which is not very much, but. And then I have a screwdriver. So a little small screwdriver. And then I have a little mini stapler. So I have a pair of scissors, a coin from Hong Kong, a flashlight, a uh, bracelet, a screwdriver, back scratcher, deck of cards, mini uh, stapler, and a TV remote. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna leave all those things right there, and then I'm gonna move the camera back right here so you can see me. Now here's what I'm gonna do. In just a moment, I'm gonna remove one of those items and I want you to see if you can figure out which item I removed, okay? You wanna see them one more time? You can see them right there. Everything is right there. There's nine items, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine items. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna move it right here where you can see me, but you can't see what I'm going to remove. And I'm going to remove one item. Now, I'm gonna put it back and you see if you can tell what I removed. You see, there's eight items now. Can you tell what I removed? You think you know? Well, it was the flashlight. You wanna try it again? All right, I'll put the flashlight here. Okay, everybody look. All right, you see all the items. I'm gonna move it back right here and I'm gonna remove one item. Now think clear, think carefully, and see if you can figure out what I removed. All right, you see them there? There were nine, now there's eight. What do you think I removed? If you said the stapler, you were right. Just kind of a silly game, but let me make a point with that game. In our Bible story today, we're going to be talking about parables again, and there's three parables that Jesus tells us, uh, and in those three parables, one of those stories is about a man who had 100 sheep. So imagine that you had 100 sheep, and this man realized that he was missing one of his sheep. Sometimes it's easy with just a small couple of items to figure out what's missing, but what if you had 100 sheep to keep up with, and yet he was able to discover that he was missing one? And we're going to hear how that story helps us understand more about God. So let's take just a moment and listen to the Bible story. Tax collectors and sinners came to listen to Jesus teach. 
The religious leaders complained because Jesus welcomed sinners. So Jesus told them three parables to teach them about God. Jesus said, if a man has 100 sheep and loses one, what does he do? He leaves the 99 sheep and searches for the lost sheep until he finds it. Then he tells his friends and neighbors, let's celebrate, I found my lost sheep. In heaven, there is more joy when one sinner repents and turns back to God than for 99 people who did not wander off. Jesus also said, if a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one of them, what does she do? She lights a lamp, sweeps the house, and searches carefully until she finds it. Then she tells her friends and neighbors, let's celebrate, I found my lost coin. Then Jesus repeated, in heaven, there is joy when one sitter repents and turns back to God. Jesus told a third story. A man had two sons. The younger son said, Father, give me my inheritance today. So the father gave his son his share. The younger son left home. He wasted his money and lived foolishly. There was a famine and the people in that country did not have enough food. The son got a job feeding pigs. He was so hungry, even the pigs food looked tasty. The younger son made a plan. He would go back to his father and admit he was wrong. He would ask to work for his father like the servants. So the younger son headed home. He was still a long way away when his father saw him coming. His father ran to him, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son began to apologize. I have sinned against God and against you, he said. But the father told his servants, let's celebrate with a feast. Bring the best robe and put it on my son. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. This son of mine was lost and now he is found. At this time, the older son came from the fields and heard music at the house. What's going on? He asked one of the servants. Your brother is here, the servant said. Your father is celebrating. The older brother was angry. He refused to go to the feast. The father asked him to come inside. The older brother said, I never disobeyed you, but you never threw a party for me. Son, the father said, everything I have is yours. We have to celebrate. Your brother was lost, but now he is found. Jesus told stories about people who were looking for things that were lost. Jesus told these stories to teach about himself. Jesus looks for people who are lost, people who do not know him. Jesus gave his life to save people from sin. Hey boys and girls, wasn't that a great Bible story? I want you to think about something for just a minute. Let's think about the three different parables or stories that Jesus told. The first one was about a man who had a hundred sheep and he lost one of those sheep and he left the 99 because that one was so important that he wanted to go and find that sheep. And the second story was about a woman who lost a coin and that coin was so important to her that she swept the house and cleaned and looked all over until she found that coin. And in both those instances, the man who lost the sheep and found the sheep and the lady who lost the coin, they celebrated with their friends what they had found. You know, God is like that. There's no one, there's no one that God doesn't care about. God loves everyone and God wants everyone to come to know him through his son, Jesus. He wants everyone to have a relationship with Jesus. No one is lost forever. 
but anyone who will come to Jesus and surrender to him can be saved, can be forgiven of their sins. And God loves everyone just like that shepherd that was looking for that one sheep. God is looking for all the men, women, boys, and girls who don't know him as Lord and Savior. And he wants them to be forgiven. He wants them to come to have a relationship with him. And then there's another story. The final story was about a man who lost his son. Well, how was the son lost? Well, the son was lost because he left and went his own way and did his own thing and wasted uh, all the money that his father had given him on what the Bible says was foolish living. And it wasn't until he came to the place where he had nothing else that he realized he was lost and didn't have anything. And so he went home to see his father. And this is one of my favorite parts of the story. You know, he had taken from his father and lived foolishly, and he didn't think he deserved to be a son anymore. But when he got there, what did his father do? His father ran out to meet him and hugged him and loved him, gave him a coat, gave him a ring, uh, killed the fatted calf, put shoes on his feet, and they celebrated. They had a big party because he said, my son was lost, but now he's found, he has come home. And that's the way God is towards us when we come to him, when we ask him to forgive us of our sins and to come into our life and save us. But that's not the end of the story. The Bible also tells us that there was an older brother who didn't go home, didn't go away from home. And his reaction to his brother coming home is very interesting. You would think he would be happy, but he was angry. He was angry that his father had thrown a party for him. He was angry of all the things that had happened. And that reminds us of how the religious leaders were in that day. They thought they could get to God by doing the right thing. And that's what the son did. He said, I've never left. I never wasted your money. I've been here the whole time, but you never threw a party for me. And Jesus was pointing out that the religious leaders of the day thought that they could earn God's favor by doing good things. But God reminds them like he reminds us that there's only one way to come to Jesus. And that's when we come humbly asking him to forgive us of our sins. The religious leaders thought that they hadn't done anything wrong, just like the brother. But we all sin. We all do things we shouldn't do. And that's the reason it's so important to understand the message of Jesus and what he's done for us. Do you remember the key passage that we've been studying? Colossians 1 verses 13 and 14 says this, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. Here's what that Bible verse says. God wants to rescue us. He wants to save us from our sin. And that's the reason Jesus came to earth. He came for the very important purpose to die on the cross for our sin. He took our punishment upon himself. And so all of us, the Bible says, have fallen short. We have sinned. We have broken God's laws. We've broken God's rules. And we need to be forgiven. But the only reason we can be forgiven is because Jesus has taken our punishment when he died on the cross. So boys and girls, I want you to pray with me right now. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, Thank you for teaching us about you today. Thank you for teaching us about God's love. Thank you for coming to earth to die on the cross for our sins. Help us to know how to give our lives to you and to live for you every day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, boys and girls, one more thing. We've got some questions for, from kids video for you here. So let's take a look at this video. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Adrian from Paris, Tennessee asks, A kid at school who is mean to others just started coming to my church. 
What should my friends and I do when we see him at church? Adrian, I think the first thing we need to recognize, it's great when anybody comes to church. It really is a sign that God is at work in their heart and they have a chance to hear the gospel and see other people like you who love Jesus and can experience what it means to have a relationship with him. So when I think about this kid at school being mean to others, I have to go two different directions. Either this kid is a believer who is not acting out the way he should, uh, that he's not letting the gospel take root in his heart so that he's loving other people, and that's a problem. Or this kid is not a believer at all, and he needs Jesus Christ. He needs to hear the gospel, trust in Jesus, and let Jesus change him so that he loves other people. And either way, what's the best thing for him? The best thing is for him to be around kids like you who love Jesus and love him. And so when this kid comes to church, I think you want to really love this person well. Welcome him, show him forgiveness, show him love and grace and mercy so that he can see that God makes a difference in the hearts and lives of those who love Jesus. And so you're modeling this to him either way. Either he needs, as a believer, needs to repent of his sin, of being mean to others and walk with Christ again rightly or trust in Jesus for the first time. I think it's exciting that you and your friends have the chance to be Jesus in front of this kid so he can follow Jesus too. So here's a question back for you. How can the way you treat someone show that person the truth about Jesus? Hitting go